Women's History Month, Iconic Women of Color in Los Angeles and California's History. Biddy Mason, Californian real estate entrepreneur and philanthropist. Born enslaved, Mason became one of the first prominent citizens and landowners in Los Angeles in the 1850s and 1860s. She also founded the first African Methodist Episcopal Church in Los Angeles in 1872. After spending five years enslaved in California, Mason challenged Smith for her freedom. On January 21, 1856, LA District Judge Benjamin Hayes approved Mason's petition. The ruling freed Mason and 13 members of her extended family. She continued working as a midwife and nurse, saving her money and using it to purchase land in what is now the heart of downtown LA. There she organized First AME Church, the oldest African-American church in the city. Mason used her wealth, estimated to be about three million, to become a philanthropist to the entire LA community. She donated to numerous charities, fed and sheltered the poor and visited prisoners. She was instrumental in founding a Traveler's Aid Center in an elementary school for black children. Anna Mae Wong, the first Chinese-American Hollywood movie star. Appearing in over 60 movies throughout her career, Anna Mae Wong was the first Chinese-American film star in Hollywood. Born in Los Angeles to second-generation Taiwanese-Chinese-American parents, Wong became infatuated with the movies and began acting in films at an early age. Though Wong was vocal in her opposition to stereotypes in typecasting, she was one of Hollywood's most memorable victims of racism and being denied leading roles in A-list pictures. She wanted to eclipse that image of being just the Chinese, the Asian, the exotic, where her ethnicity had nothing to do with it. It's very hard for Hollywood audiences to relate to someone whom they know is not going to get the guy. She cannot have the kind of love interest that ultimately would give her stardom. I've seen how the authorities handle things. I'm not into I really believe that she did not succumb to playing stereotypical parts. She always seemed to have a kind of dignity and a strength that never embarrasses me. Although she was a big star, more importantly, she was a great gal. Karen Bass, Congress member representing the 37th Congressional District. Congress member Karen Bass was re-elected to her sixth term representing the 37th Congressional District in November 2020. Bass was born in Los Angeles, California, witnessing the civil rights movement on television with her father as a child sparked her interest in community activism. Congress member Bass serves on the House Committee of Foreign Affairs where she is the chair of the Subcommittee on African Global Health and Global Human Rights. She also serves on the House Judicial Subcommittee of Crime and Terrorism where she is active in working to craft sound criminal justice reform policy. ...to stop our country from giving in to the incoherent rage which Trump has taken advantage of to declare war on common sense. Donald Trump... When you take pride in your outright ignorance of world affairs, when you promise the mass deportation of Latino families, when you dismiss officer-involved shootings of African Americans, when you degrade women, Donald Trump, you unite us. Estelle Lawton Lindsay, first woman mayor of a major U.S. city. On September 10, 1915, Los Angeles City Councilman Estelle Lawton Lindsay was appointed to act as mayor of Los Angeles on behalf of Mayor Charles Sebastian. This made Lindsay the first woman to serve as mayor of a major U.S. city, even if it was only for 36 hours. Just three months earlier, Lindsay also made history by taking a seat on the Los Angeles City Council. She was the first woman elected to the council of a major U.S. city prior to her election to the city council. Lindsay worked as a newspaper writer and journalist for the Los Angeles Record. Lindsay championed public health measures, press enforcement of the state's anti-prostitution law, fought for greater city service for impoverished women, and secured the appointment of several female deputies assigned to investigate crimes against women and children. 
Ava DuVernier, award-winning writer, director, and producer, highest grossing black woman director in American box office history. Ava DuVernier has made history as a writer, director, and producer. She was the first African-American woman to win Best Director at the Sun Dance Film Festival, be nominated for a Best Director Golden Globe, direct a film nominated for a Best Picture Oscar, and direct a film with a budget of over $100 million. Her work has made her the highest grossing Black woman director in American box office history. Her latest project, When They See Us, was nominated for 16 Emmy Awards, making her the first African-American woman in primetime Emmy history to receive multiple nominations in their career for directing. In 2017, DuVernier was included on the annual Times 100 list of the most influential people in the world. In 2020, DuVernier was elected to the Academy of Motion Pictures Arts and Science Board of Governors as part of the director's branch. Our work is a mirror, you know, a mirror of what we believe, all of our work. So what we put on screen is important, wildly important, monumentally important, but the way that we go about that work is also important. Our crews, our directors, our writers, we talk about that and we keep talking about that and that's a part of the conversation that's being centered right now. And we'll keep doing it until we don't have to have the conversation anymore. But there's a part of that conversation that I don't feel we talk about hardly enough. And that is about our mirror. And for me, that includes representation and our representatives. Who speaks for us within the industry? Our lawyers, our managers, our agents, those women, humble in ranks, have a struggle within a male-dominated industry. And it is important to me to have an all-women team in the same way that a lot of people have all-men team, right? To make a point. Yeah. <clears throat> to make a point about the importance of the woman's voice in all aspects of the work we choose to do. To have women represent me to studios and networks in my business endeavors, to align with forward thinking and like-minded women and men in my work matters to me because everything matters. Not just what's on the screen, but the way we go about putting that work on the screen. Ellen Ochoa, the first woman Hispanic astronaut. Ellen Ochoa is an American engineer who in 1993 became the first Hispanic woman to go to space when she served on a nine-day mission abroad the space shuttle Discovery. Ellen Ochoa was born May 10, 1958 in Los Angeles. She later served as director of NASA's Johnson Space Center 2013 to 2018. Ochoa received a Bachelor's of Science degree in Physics from San Diego State University and graduated Pi Beta Kappa in 1980 before earning a Master's of Science degree and a doctorate from Stanford Department of Electrical Engineering in 1981 and 1985. As Chief of the Intelligence System Technology Branches at AIM, she supervised 35 engineers and scientists in the research and development of computational systems for aerospace missions. Ochoa has presented numerous papers at technical conferences in scientific journals. Dr. Ellen Ochoa has received numerous awards, including NASA's Distinguished Service Medal and four spaceflight medals. She is also the recipient of the Hispanic Heritage Leadership Award. Two schools bear her moniker, the Ellen Ochoa Middle School in Pasco, Washington, and the Ellen Ochoa Learning Center in Cudahy, California. T minus 10, 9, 8, we have a go for engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. We have liftoff of Discovery on the second mission to Planet Earth Research Flight. Maxine Waters, U.S. Representative for California's 43rd Congressional District since 1991. One of the most powerful women in American political history, Maxine Waters has gained a reputation as a fearless and outspoken advocate for women, children, people of color, and the poor. She has combined her strong legislative and public policy of human and high visibility and Democratic Party activities with a remarkable ability to do grassroots organizing. Congressional Women Waters represents a large part of South Los Angeles, including the communities of Westchester, 
Playa del Rey and Watts in the unincorporated areas of Los Angeles County comprised of Lenox, West Athens, West Carson, Harbor Gateway, and El Camino Village. The 43rd district also includes the diverse cities of Gardena, Hartthorne, Inglewood, Londale, Lomita, and Torrance. Ramona Acosta Banuelos, the first Latina U.S. treasurer and Mexican-American pioneer. Ramona Acosta Banuelos was born in 1925 into a poor family of Mexican-Americans and eventually became the first Latina treasurer of the United States, making her story an American rags to riches adventure. In 1963, Ramona Costa Banuelos and her partners established the Pan American National Bank in East Los Angeles, California. She believed that if Hispanics could increase their financial base, they would have more political influence and be able to improve their standard of living. In 1969, Banuelos was appointed chairman of the bank's board of directors and received the city's Outstanding Businesswoman of the Year award. Appointed by President Richard Nixon on September 20th, 1971, she served from December 17, 1971 to February 14, 1974 as the first Latina Treasurer of the United States. Aurora Castello, Mother of East Los Angeles Aurora Castello was an environmentalist and in 1984, Castello, nicknamed La Donna, co-founded the Mothers of East Los Angeles, Mila. Mila fought to stop the construction of oil pipelines, prisons, toxic waste incinerators, and waste treatment plants in working class neighborhoods. In 1995, she was awarded the Goldsmith Environmental Prize for protecting East Los Angeles from toxic waste and environmental racism. The first Angelino to receive the honor. Helen Lufong, architect and interior designer, an important figure in the Goji architectural movement. Helen Lufong was a Chinese-American architect and interior designer from Los Angeles, California. She became one of the first women to join the American Institution of Architects. Fong was an important figure in the go Gi architectural movement, designing futuristic buildings like Norm's Restaurant, the Holiday Bowl, Denny's Bob's Big Boy, and Pan's Coffee Shop that helped usher in an era of boomerang angles, dynamic forms, and neon lights. Fong grew up working in her family's laundry business and knew by age 12 that she wanted to become an architect. She began attending the University of California, Los Angeles in 1943, transferring to the University of California, Berkeley after two years. Fong graduated and received a second degree in city planning from the Berkeley School of Architect in 1949. Dr. Nadine Burke Harris, California's first Surgeon General. Nadine Burke Harris is a pediatrician who has been the Surgeon General of California since 2019. She is the first person appointed to that position. And although she is not from Los Angeles, she deserves her flowers for taking care of all of California. Held as a pioneer in the treatment of toxic stress, she is known for linking adverse childhood experiences and toxic stress with harmful effects to health later in life. From 2010 to 2012, Burke Harris co-founded the Adverse Childhood Experiences Project. In 2014, she spoke at a TED event. Her talk, How Childhood Trauma Affects Health Across a Lifetime, has reached over 7.2 million viewers on TED.com as of June 2020. In the mid-90s, the CDC and Kaiser Permanente discovered an exposure that dramatically increased the risk for seven out of 10 of the leading causes of death in the United States. In high doses, it affects brain development, the immune system, hormonal systems, and even the way our DNA is read and transcribed. Folks who are exposed in very high doses have triple the lifetime risk of heart disease and lung cancer and a 20-year difference in life expectancy. And yet doctors today are not trained in routine screening or treatment. 
Now, the exposure I'm talking about is not a pesticide or a packaging chemical. It's childhood trauma.